Hello everyone, welcome back to Rathbone Manor. Um, today I'm going to be taking a look at this Kershaw Select Fire that I got from Fastech. But before we look at it, um, I just want to show you how it arrived here via the post. For a start, the uh, packaging was open like this, would you believe? Um, the box broken open. Uh, obviously it arrived in its little bag, which is also split. Um, how the hell it managed to get here, I don't know, but it did, all in one piece. Uh, the, um, the both, the, all four bits are here as well. It's just amazing how the hell it made it here, but it did somehow or another. Anyway, to the knife. Actually, it's uh, got a quite a nice buttery smooth action on it and that's really nice um, it's, it's quite a well made knife actually looking at it um, now whether it's one of these things as I say again that's um, the genuine article made by the factory for Kershaw and this was shipped out the back door as it were I don't really know um, and I'll tell you what else came with it. These operating instructions. I mean that's quite a nice quite a nice bit of sort of like very thick paper is that. There you go look. And I've had a look through this and I can't see any sort of like uh, glaring spelling mistakes or anything. So again, you know, is this the genuine article shipped out the back door? Who knows? Anyway, let's just have a bit of a closer look at this little fellow, shall we? So, as usual then, we'll start with the blade. You can see it's got a very nice swedge at the top here. Um, hollow grind. Um, we'll find out how good this edge is later on. Um, interestingly, when I uh, saw it on Fastech, the one in the picture has got um, some serrations just here, but as you can see, this one's arrived with a plain blade. Not that it matters any, because it's still quite a nice knife so far. Um, the other thing I can see here is um, it's not been sharpened properly up to the uh, sharpness choil here. Let's just have an even closer look at that, shall we? We'll pop the old macro lens on and have a look. Right then, there we go, look. As you can see, not been sharpened all the way to the sharpening choil at all so I can only assume it must have been tea break when the guy was sharpening this one dropped it down and off he went for his cup of coffee hmm okay so we've got some uh, thumb studs here and um, unlike my Kershaw shuffle clone these are tightened up properly and you've got the uh, Kershaw name there. Looks all right. Um, I think this has got some sort of coating on it because it feels very much like my um, HX Outdoors um, D123, I think it is, that big one I've got. Um, we're moving along to the scales now, which I believe, according to Kershaw, are glass-filled nylon. Um, they look all right and they feel nice too. There's a nice finish to them. We have torque screw construction, as you can quite clearly see there. And then we move along. We can see the uh, two of the um, bits. These are Phillips bits here. Um, liners. Now, I've seen some of the pictures on the uh, Kershaw site. Oh, sorry for swearing there. Kershaw site are actually black liners, but these ones appear to be the same coating as the blade. Um, let's have a look at the other side of things. We have the two flat bits, and these are uh, spring-loaded, which is a good idea. And the Kershaw logo on the pocket clip is actually the right way up. Again, if you look at my Kershaw shuffle, you will find they've engraved it upside down. This is held in place with a couple of uh, 
torque screws and can be mounted on the other side as well. What have we got over here? Ah, uh -huh, China, strangely enough. And then we've got uh, 1920 STWM and G, and G plus G Hawk design. And the other side of the swedge here. And as I say, we'll find out how good this blade is on later on. Okay. Oh, oh yes, let's not forget the um, screwdriver bit holder. We've got um, metric on one side an imperial uh, measurement on the other side so you can use it as a bit of a ruler as well and I think you'll find in here hang on oops oh, that's better in here you've got a little magnet to keep the bits in place oh well, that is something interesting check out the way it's uh, it's kept in place look you see that little uh, round bit in there there it goes look see that how it locks it in place and you've got a 90 degree uh, lock as well same thing again and we'll close her up and you'll see it let's have a look here you'll see it uh, hopefully there we go it's good isn't it And of course, if we look in here, it looks like we may have some Teflon washers in here because it's buttery smooth the way it opens. Oh, righty then. I suppose we better get the bits of bag in here and see just how sharp this blade is. Okay, here it is. Here's the blade. And we'll start with the... Um, the Christmas menu 2016 again. See if we can knock a corner or two off of it, shall we? Let's give it a go. Oh. Well, as you can see, that is quite good, isn't it? So if I can do it, the knife can certainly do it. Especially the tip there, that's pretty sharp. That's pretty good, that. Let's get rid of that. And these as well can go on the floor. Um, I've got my cardboard here. I don't know what we can do with cardboard. Shall we try and find out? Oh, well, yeah. That's quite good, isn't it? He likes the cardboard, then. Good. And bits can go on the floor as well. Get rid of them. Get rid of that. Um, I've got a uh, a random zip tie that I found, so we'll uh, see if we can chop through that little one. Well, yeah, that was quite easy for it, wasn't it? Um, now, didn't I have a uh, a larger one in here that I'd started on? Yeah, there it is, the larger one I've started on the other week. If I can keep hold of it, we'll, oop, we'll see what it can do. Yeah, it likes that one then. Okay. Um, well I've got me a uh, nice thick green package strap in here. Let's have a look. Any squeaking? Let's see if it squeaks. No squeaking. But it's chopping it up. Look. It likes that one then too. Might fold it over and have a listen wow yep yes it liked that one too um let's go ahead and get some this uh, speaker cable out again that i can pick up from work every now and again right oh yeah you can even see the copper through there as well look glinting away hopefully Cool. Alrighty then. So, oh, ah, where's my rope? Have I got any rope left? Um, let's get this little bit of blue in here first. Now you can see how good that is, look. Gentle rocking motion, and away it goes. That's good. 
Yes, very good. Um, I've got a little bit of this uh, cheapy green stuff in the bottom of the bag if I can get out in one piece. What's happened to the rest of it? Where's it all gone? Well, yeah, it went straight through that. No, just one moment. Let's see if I can find um, the rest of it, which is probably ah, in the cupboard. There it is. Right, let's get some and do something with it so it's a bit better. Right, there we go. That's um, quite a few folds there. And Yep, not too bad at all then. So what we'll do, we'll stick this in the bits of bag so we know where it is next time. Well, yeah, it's all right on the old cutting test there then. Right, let's see if the uh, the coating here stood up to the cutting test, shall we? Um, this side looks okay to me. And the other side, well, it looks like we've got something going on just here, look. I think you can see that just there. There's a couple of scuffs in the coating. He said, be very careful. Um, it's still there a bit. So it has marked it uh, to a degree. Alrighty then, so that's uh, set up quite well to that. Um, let's get a bit wider here. As you can see, the uh, ergonomics are, are quite nice, actually. It's quite a nice knife to handle. Um, I can't feel any hot spots. Maybe getting a little bit from the pocket clip here. Um, it's quite nice. The interesting thing about this multi-tool, as a, opposed to other multi-tools, you've got a, a decent-sized blade on here. Because a lot of the multi-tools you get have got a um, you know, very small blade, but this one's quite a good sized blade. In fact, it's 85 millimeters in length, apparently. And so here I have a few other of my um, knife-based uh, multi-tools. You've got the uh, San Renmu um, 709A LUE. That's got another buttery smooth blade on it. And um, also, I'm supposed to be doing a review on this, which I've got half finished and forgotten about. And I shall have to finish that one off. But as you can see, look, once again, the uh, Kershaw's got a much better blade with it. Oh, this one, this one locks as well. Um, I've got a um, Victorinox. Um, oh, I can't think what it is, but this is a got a locking blade too. It's um, very similar in size to the Kershaw, so that's quite a good blade too. A few serrations on it. Um, it locks the wrong way. Uh, sort of, let me show you. This is um, like designed for right-handers. But this uh, Victorian Ox Trailmaster is what it is. It locks in a left-handed fashion. See, you've got to push it over from the wrong side, as it were. It makes it a bit awkward, really. And then I have my Victorinox Farmer, which doesn't lock at all. As you can see, that's another smallish little blade, more on par with the uh, San Renmu here. They're more or less the same size. Okay. Right, let's see if we can give you some idea as of dimensions and weight. And we'll start with my little tape measure here. Well, not so little tape measure. Um, uh, right, it's just falling over on the... Uh, it goes out of balance when you uh, open the blade up. But you're looking at... Uh, oh, good grief. Right, let's see if we can... <laughs> um, let's see if we can do this for you guys. Overall length, you're looking at about 100... And um, 90 mil according to fast tech but according to my tech measure about 192 uh, blade length 85 mil yep that's 85 mil um, let's get rid of that 
you've seen some size comparisons so we don't really need to be doing that again but we will get Mrs Rathbone's scales in and pop the knife on looks to me like five and a quarter ounces from upside down here or 147 grams that's interesting because uh, I think Fast Tech have got it down as 144 grams but anyway that's what I make it 147 grams check it out guys uh, Mrs Rathbone and I have just uh, won 10 pounds on this scratch card so I shall be using that to buy another knife for you guys to look at awesome Ah, oh, do you know what I forgot to chop up? Ah, uh, yep. Lynx. Seatbelt webbing. Let's give it a go. You should be able to chop it up. Right, let's have a look. Oh yeah. Very easy. And the stab test. Minding your fingers, of course, guys. Oh yeah, look at that, it's just a push through, look at that. Wow. Yep. Rocks its way through that, doesn't it? What about, can we slice it with a tip? Just about. There we are, look at that. So, what is my opinion of this Kershaw Selectifier 1920 that I got from Fast Tech? Well, as I say, is it a clone? Or is it a genuine article sent out the back door of the factory? Um, you know, you've got some going to Kershaw for sale for them, and you've got some going to Fast Tech at uh, the back door. Is that what this is? Because I've seen these for about, um, I think uh, Heine Haynes have got these for about £37. And this one cost me about £9.73 in total, or about $10.88. Um, all the way from China. It's uh, quite nice, I, I think it's quite nice actually. Um, it's definitely got the uh, quality going on there. And as I say, it's um, buttery smooth. So is it got uh, nylon washers or Teflon washers in there I don't know but it certainly opens and closes very nicely and the uh, scales they're quite nice too it's quite as I say ergonomically it's very nice indeed and you've also got this uh, proper screwdriver going on here as well um, and that's an interesting point it will accept any standard um, these driver bits so if you don't actually need to use um, flat bit drivers or uh, Phillips drivers you can actually um, pop in um, hex bits hex bits will fit in there these standard sized bits so you can so if you wanted to you could carry hex bits or security torques bits if you need to um, it will actually go into the uh, There you go. You can carry that with you. Whichever size you carry or require on a daily basis, you can just swap the bits out to your heart's content, really. Um, yeah, this is it's quite a um, useful piece of kit, really. Okay, then. So, as I say, it's got this beautiful, buttery, smooth opening to it. Quite good lock up there. As you can see, um, a very nice strong pocket clip on there and these um, bits are in a very clever little spring loaded holder and as I say God knows how they got here but they did somehow. Let's just grab one of these out of there and we'll try it in the um, screwdriver holder and you can see, there it goes, sucked in by the magnet. Okay, so what we'll have to do is, I think, we'll have to get this down into the workshop and see what we can do 
with a screwdriver. To the workshop, everyone! So here we are, guys, in the workshop, and my recently installed little workbench here. So we'll see what uh, the screwdriver can cope with, shall we? Let's have a look. Oops, I'm tripping over the bucket here as well, for that matter. Okay guys, so it sounds very much like Mrs Rathbone's put the heating on, the boiler's running. I hope that won't um, uh, upset your enjoyment of this uh, video, but as it's got a fairly large blade on it, let's see what it's like chopping wood. Yes, it looks quite good. So you could use it in a survival situation as well, I would imagine, if you needed to. Yes, it's good. Right then, let's try the uh, screwdriver bits with it that came with it, shall we? And we'll start with a, a Phillips. Have we got a nice large Phillips screw here? Yes, we'll we'll use this one here and see how it copes. Let's pop it in. We'll make a small hole in this bit of wood here. And we'll drop the screw into it. It's quite a large screw, this one. Right, in. let's see what it does. Well, it feels quite um, quite good at uh, what it's meant to do here. It's going in quite well. It doesn't feel like it wants to collapse, like, uh, you know, collapse as in like some of the other um, multi-tool screwdrivers have done. It's doing a, quite a good job, actually. Yes, look at that. Yes, let's drive him right home, shall we? Yep, has it done any damage to the... Uh, no, it hasn't. Screwdriver bit's quite good still. No, I can't see any damage to the tip. Can you guys? I can't. It looks all right to me. And what other uses do you think we can put this to? Well, you've probably seen them, my review of them. My little socket adapter bits. Let's have a look. We'll get the uh, 3 8 square drive out on this occasion. And yeah, that fits in too. So let's go and get a uh, 3 8 drive socket and we'll see what it can achieve. Alright, so here we have a 13mm socket. Pop it in. Okay, so I have my uh, test nut and bolt here in the vise ready to go. Um, you can use the um, select fire in this fashion or it'll even work at 90 degrees to get a little bit more torque with it. Let's give it a go shall we, see what happens. Right, is it tight and we'll just give it a little bit more torque. There we go, definitely tight now. Release it. Hopefully, there we go. So there we go. It works. Okay guys, now during that test something very interesting happened. Uh oh! The head came off the driver, look. <laughs> hmm. That's um, not quite so good then. Can we get it back in there? Will it go back in? Hmm. Well, that's uh, very interesting. I wonder if I can get it back in again. Well, I have to say, that wasn't so brilliant then. I mean, I've uh, hit it back on again pushed it back in place again, but yeah, that's not good. So here we are, back from the workshop. Um, what an interesting result on the screwdriver then. The head coming off. Well that's not too clever is it really? Um, if any of you guys out there have got one of these, um, even if it's a genuine model, uh, have you had the same experience with a screwdriver head. If you have, 
please let me know because I'll be quite interested to hear whether it's just this one or um, they all do it. Of course, the most useful tool on here is this one here. What's that all about, I hear you ask? It's a bottle opener. So let's get down to the kitchen and try it out, shall we? Right then guys, so there's my review of this um, Kershaw Selectifier that I picked up from uh, Fastec. Um, we had a rather interesting result in the workshop with the uh, head of the screwdriver coming loose. But then again, that might just be down to me trying to use a socket with it, which is probably not what it was designed for in the first place, I would imagine. Um, but it's a lovely, silky smooth blade on here. Very nice. Um, it cuts well, very sharp, um, chops wood up as well. I think it's reasonably well finished. I think it's quite nicely finished actually. Good quality and definitely worth the money I paid for it. It's a very solid knife. Um, it handles very well, it's not uncomfortable in any way. Locks up well. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you've, as I say, if you've got a, an original one of these, you can let me know if you've had the same problem with the head coming off. Um, I understand, I've seen on Gearbest you can get um, a Kima, Kima, C I M A version of this, um, which I think I might have to get in and do a comparison with. Um, but yeah, at least, you know, let me know. If you've got one of these, let me know your experience with it. Um, if you haven't done so already, you can um, subscribe, you can click like, you can share the video with your friends and show them what you've been watching. And you can also follow me on Instagram. And that is where I put up pictures of new knives I've just got in so you guys can see what's coming along. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video today. Uh, I enjoyed making it for you once again. So. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you here again another day, and I'll see you later then, guys. Bye. Oh, righty then. I think we've been... Hang on. Oh. If I can get the old microphone to stay where I want it to. Yeah, well, there we go. Oh, righty then. I suppose we better get the bit.